Well, hello, boys and girls. Today we're going to be having a book discussion. Is your migration to the north? By Taya Sole. Good job. Right, so what do you think of the book so far? What has surprised you thus um, far? All of like the sexual, like, uh, mention, I can't think of the word I'm trying to say, but like, all the sexual situations, like, that's just a lot, and the fact that he uses stereotypes, like, of his own culture to further his, like, yeah. sexual advancement of women. Do you think someone that, like, didn't know about the stereotypes, someone that's, like, think that's how Afri actually able to pick up on that? I don't know. Yeah, I mean, definitely, because he said he used, like, animals that didn't exist. Uh, oh, yeah, li like, lions in the jungle. I mean, yeah. Which is like not. I'm pretty sure that would be like unbelievable if you were actually from there. Like I don't think you would. Um, I think you would realize that was wrong. Do you think there's a reason that Tayeb Salah put that in there? Do you think maybe he knew some people that were like that? I mean, I think you like people today like only think of Africa in like terms of the jungle and stuff like that. So hmm. I think that's also part of it. Hmm. But. Yeah, I, I find of do you think uh, maybe that, like, using promiscuity as a means to, uh, like, portray Mustafa, do you think that may be, like, a way that Tay of Sal is trying to connect Africans to Westerners, maybe? Um, do you think promiscuous Westerners would be like, they just be like, hey, it's just like me, and be like, oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> do you? Because I don't think so. I don't know, maybe for people who like are always promiscuous and doing stuff like that would do that and be like, hey, I uh, do stuff like that too. Maybe Africans aren't the way I thought about them, and my worldview is limited, and <laughs> you know, it could happen. Um, it could. I guess that could be true, but like with me, it's not. But maybe that's because I'm not. I don't feel that way. I, I mean, it's definitely like a thing that's the same across cultures, like people who are like promiscuous like that, like that's a thing that happens everywhere, but I don't think that that would be like a connection that you would use, like, at least not in my mind. Yeah, I, I feel like connections would be more positive, so I feel like, yeah. I feel like if that's what he was trying to do, then it probably wouldn't work, but I don't think that's what he was going for, that for making him promiscuous. Yeah, because um, like the connections in like, um, Things fall apart when more like familial and like cultural and like yeah. So I think those were like not more accurate but more like effective. Yeah, like well in Western culture there will be like um, domestic abuse. No one's going to relate to Africa and go, hey, Africans like may not may may have some similarities to our culture because yeah. of domestic abuse. Yeah. no one's going to take exactly. that negatively. So, I don't think so. Why do you think he made him like that then? Why do you think? What do you think the need for that was? Or do you think maybe that will be explained to us in further um, pages? Maybe it will. I don't know. I have no idea. I haven't read most of it, but I feel like it's kind of like the extreme. Like he's going so far as to use like his culture to like pursue this. That like. That's like also the promiscuity is an extreme of like any culture anyway. So hmm. maybe it's just like if that makes any sense. You see where I'm going at all? Uh, if you explain it for that, I'm <laughs> like, like, um, the like he's using he's not using the promiscuity as like a connection, but it's just like, um, it's like. Yeah, I'm lost. I lost my thoughts. I think I think I know what you're saying. I think he's using the promiscuity and the make and he's using that as character development to further the plot right now. Yeah. And I think maybe that'll have a later connection to Africa and the West later. But I think right now, one through thirty seven, I think there's no with the context we have, I don't think there's anything that we're gonna get from it like right now. Or we have to definitely complete the book. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. I thought I thought it wasn't so bad though. I thought it was kind of interesting how um, I didn't ever feel lost in the language. Like with Heart of Darkness, sometimes I would feel lost and I have to like put it down and like take a fat ten minutes not to think about it, just like play on my phone and just like let it like be sorted out in my mind. Yeah, yeah. Like because it's definitely because of the word choice, but with um, 
For this one, I, I felt pretty good about the diction. It was pretty modern, I guess. Yeah, it was but, um, definitely modern. Yeah, sometimes I kind of felt lost when he was like using an extended metaphor, like uh, the one about the ship and the bow and the arrow. He was like, you remember that? Yeah. Which yeah. Page, what page are you on? I'm trying to find. I'm trying to find the. Uh, to find that he did repeat it several times, I'm pretty sure. Yeah, I was trying to think about uh page 28 of my edition. Um, it's gonna be like before this giant break where it says everything. Okay, yeah, yeah. He says, um, that he says, nothing whatsoever had happened except that the water skin had descended further, the bowstring had become more taut, the arrow will shoot forth towards other unknown horizons. I kind of thought that was maybe like. Since he like went to school and he was a super smart burrito and he kept going up and up, maybe that like his potential was like the potential energy of like the arrow and the bowstring being pulled like back and like it tightening, more energy was being stored in there and like it was going to be released and that was going to be him like, uh, like I guess going far into the end of life having a great future and much success. Yeah. So I think, but I think maybe. What happened is, and why he kept using that is he kept pulling tighter and tighter to the point where it was like hurting the arrow itself. You know, like if you like pull too far, it would like bend like the bow of the arrow or whatever. Right. And like then like it would start hurting himself. And that's kind of like what he started doing. He like those he like made those he like indirectly made those women commit suicide. He killed Gene Morris, and it was because he like pulled too far. I guess. Mhm. Mm you know. Yeah, and I think that also like the image of the knife, like. Um, the knife of his mind. Yeah, my mind is like a sharp knife. And like he says that right after he goes, he says, one day they found her dead, she had gassed herself. They also found a small piece of paper with my name on it. And so like, it's like a knife, like he's hurting himself as well as others, like you were talking uh, about. Oh, yeah. You know, that could be like partly what he meant there, I guess. Why did those women commit suicide? Was it just because he slept with them? Or was, was there some other reason? Was um, it maybe... I think maybe it was because, like, he said, like, he would... He, he had an unending supply of, like, of, like, words, I guess. Like, stuff that would make them fall in love with him and they would break their heart. Is that it? Yeah, I think that's part of it. And also that, like, he preyed on women who, like, he felt were, like, not like mentally unstable kind of like uh, or because he like says she proved an easy prey like uh, you know what i mean so yeah. maybe because he, he talks about like what attracted uh her to him and so maybe it could be that they were like mentally unwell anyway and then he did all these like mind games with them yeah like, yeah 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 and the way that he talks about like how they were in the bedroom was like really I don't know. Too much. Yeah. yeah, and also like, it made made you think like that he was not screwing with them, but like basically screwing with them, like like with their minds, you know, like yeah. playing mind games mind and stuff. Games, yeah. So maybe that just like pushed them over the edge. What happened with Jean Morris? When did he kill her? Because remember it was mentioned, but I I couldn't find like where like ex where it was like explicitly stated. It was it was definitely more implicitly implied. Um, I don't think there is a, like, specific place where he says I'm really Unless wondering. I'm missing it, too. Because he keeps saying, like, and the train carried me to Victoria Station to the world of Gene Morris. Um, and yeah. he talks about, like, the I, yeah. trial. But I don't think he explicitly says, like, I think, I think might be going into that. Like, yeah, I think we'd have, I think that's, we definitely have to read the novel. Yeah. Yeah, to figure that out. I think he keeps like getting to it and getting to it and getting to it though. Like, it's it's got a lot of tension and suspense right now. Yeah, especially on, like the the bone string. You know what's going on, but you don't know it's really like what's actually like the whole story. And he says like right at the beginning of the second chapter, he says like, oh darn, where is it? It's a long story, but I won't tell you everything. Yeah. I think that's so. I think it's definitely. You have to fill in some parts on your own. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Did, did anything like seem like really foreign to you that you didn't really like? That's what I was about understand. To um, not necessarily like a few things, yeah, because it's just like cultural, like 
Mm. I feel like because we've read like all the other books and like we've talked about it in class, I feel like not a lot of it seems like foreign and different to me. And it's like because we've yeah. talked about it, we've read all this stuff. Like, um, like things fall apart. It's like, all right, that's how things are. Yeah. Can't really. Uh, nothing you could throw at me now that um, right. seem really foreign to me. No, I think like the only like a couple things are just like how they talk about their Muslim culture, but also that's not like completely foreign to me. It's yeah. just not I've not like encountered that like in the way that they talk about it in this book. It's not close, I guess. I've 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 read the book about it like that one that was like uh, what was it called? It was about that one girl in the school and she was Muslim. She got shot in the face. Um, I, I'm, I'm a lot of yeah, yeah. yeah. I read that and it talked about Muslim culture, so it's like... You're not... I'm you're not... Yeah, I'm, it, kind I'm, of, yeah, so yeah. I've definitely had some experience with reading about it. Right. But, um... So so that wasn't really too different for me. Yeah, but I, I could definitely see how for some people, if they haven't read books like that, yeah. it would definitely be different. Yeah. Um... I thought it was interesting that they talked about like the distinction of like the women's part of the house and the man's part of the house. Oh, uh, I remember we learned about that in like the world class. Or really? Something like that. Yeah, there was like a man's domain of the house and a woman's domain. I remember that. Specifically. Yeah. Yeah, and it was just kind of funny how they, like, he explicitly mentioned that. Like, it wasn't like a, he didn't expect you to know it, I guess. Yeah, yeah, so. I guess so. I don't think a lot of people would know. No, I got from reading it and like him not mentioning that I wouldn't have realized, you know. But there is like a definite contrast of like how much like his mom is mentioned rather than like the way that he interacts with his father. Yeah, like, didn't his father die though? That's my I'm I meant the narrator, I'm sorry. Oh, oh the, sorry, narrator. the narrator. Yeah, the narrator. Not, the, how, uh, um, not Mustafa. Mustafa, yeah. yeah. I was talking about the narrator, yeah. Because it, it like he's talking about the house then when the narrator is speaking, he talks about like how the women are in this place and the men are in the like parlor or whatever and they have to really see okay. guests. I feel like maybe that maybe that like the names would be kind of foreign to some people, but like I used to work mm -hmm. at this fast food place that was horrible, but I miss it. It's really crazy. But we used to have a manager. He was one of the big boy managers. He started out as like one of the big like little like uh regular employees a crew member and he was like just like it's like corporate like it yeah. was it's crazy but his name was Saeed and I was like hey I know that name Saeed <laughs> yeah. he's a really nice guy spelled just like that too and um I used to work with a bunch of people from Senegal one was named Abdullah one was named uh Cherno but it was spelled like Ferno it was pronounced Cherno and there was another one uh I don't remember what I don't remember what the last one was but they were all brothers so that's why I'm like calling him they yeah, they're all brothers. Yes. And then they had a cousin named Bubakar, who was really nice. And then they had another brother named Muhammad. Right. And so like the names don't really seem too foreign to me. Mustafa kind of sounds like Mufasa. So. Yeah, about the same thing. So, like, so like, <laughs> I feel like to some people maybe the maybe the names are foreign, but it doesn't really seem foreign to me. Yeah, yeah, I think that's it. Pretty much a lesson of the classroom. Maybe maybe the scene. Maybe, but like, but Mustafa, we're also a farmer, we have farms here, so that's like not too foreign. Right. Um, yeah. I remember he brought him a fruit, and I think we have that that, that kind of fruit here. Gosh, I don't remember. It was, um, he like walked. Was it oranges? I think it was oranges. I don't remember though. I think it was oranges. We have those here, so that's not. Agricultural project committees. I thought it was kind of cool how they also had like farming committees there too. Yeah. When we got out that year, I was like, huh, okay. Yeah. Yeah, it's definitely similar. It was just like a community meeting, basically. Basically, like a town hall for agriculture. Yeah. 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 Um, and there's a president who's his the narrator, Chaka Trend. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And also, they allowed Mustafa to be a member because he's an outsider. Yeah, like if you didn't tell me, like. If there was like no mention of like race and he didn't tell me where this was from, I would like imagine this was like, I don't know, my great my, my great grandpa's like grown up. Kind of sounds like the Midwest or something. Yeah, like kind of sounds like Little House on the Prairie, like, yeah. the, like <laughs> a little farming community and stuff. Right. If you cut out all the stuff about the sex when, uh, 
when Usaka starts talking. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. So it's like relatable. Yeah. Other than that, it really didn't seem too foreign to me. Like, it didn't at all. It was no. probably because I'm in this class. Yeah, that's very true. I think we're sweet. So I think we definitely got an implicit bias. Yeah. Um. So did you know anything about Arabic culture and uh, Sudan before reading the book? I mean, a little just from like history class and stuff, but not anything in depth. I know, uh, I know the, I know the Arabic culture. That's where algebra comes from. I like, I, really, I like math a lot. So I read the Wikipedia page <laughs> just the intro part. And I like, you know how they have, they have like all the al words. Like I guess al means something like a l dash and then like some other word. Yeah. That's how it, like algebra is from. Oh. Huh. Isn't that kind of cool? Interesting. Yeah, yeah, that's what I said. Um, yeah, and they, um, I think, I don't remember really who it was, but some of them did algebra too. Like, I think they did it without, without, without like, symbols first. They, like, I don't know how they did that, but I, I remember reading that somewhere. So I thought that was kind of cool. Okay. I don't know if Sudan recently had this. It's the newest country in the world. It's called, there's like now South Sudan, which is a separate country. And there's oh. like, not a lot of people know about it because there's a lot of violence going on there. It's yeah. kind of like um, Rwanda. There, there's a lot of violence there. So it's oh. just like that. Gotcha. But and just like Rwanda, no one really intervened with that. And no one's really intervening right now, but they really should be. And there's, there's a lot of like conflict between the, it's like, different groups of people yeah. with like different backgrounds and different origins right. like the like tribal origins i think i'm not sure yeah but it's really bad i know it's really violent it's really sad i don't like it i think we should intervene because there's another another rwanda genocide that's not good yeah i did not know that so not a lot of people do i'm really i'm really surprised like i feel like it should be all over the news but i guess it's not yeah it's kind of like selective yeah. Recording, I guess. Yeah, I watched a YouTube video on it like a year ago. Oh. <laughs> it's on my recommenders. Gotcha. I watched this like show called Vox. It's really interesting. It's got a lot of stuff that I didn't know. Um. Yeah, other than that, I didn't. I don't really. I don't have much like. I remember I I I, I used to know about Arabic culture. I knew. Oh, I know. Um. Uh, it was like the. A, a, a AP world. Remember, we like learned about like there was like the Muslim Empire, I guess. Like it was, it was like oh, Isla God. Islamic Empire, I guess. There's like I don't remember how they made it or, or how big it was or or anything like that. But I remember that happened. And yeah. I, I know. Um, so I think I'd like I think I maybe uh, refresh me to read the Wikipedia page on it again or watch the John Green video. And I, I know they got, uh, yeah. and I know they got the Sunni and the Shia, the, the Muslims. Is the Shiite? Shiite. I, don't know. I feel. I think. I think they're both right. I know. Uh, that, maybe there's. Maybe there's two Muslims. But I, mean, I, I think. It, I know what you're talking about, though. I don't. Yeah. I. I know they don't like each other. Yeah. Do you, and one's like more like, uh, like the Shia or Shiite. I, I don't remember which one is which. Extremists. No, 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 not all of them are extremists. But like they. That's where they steer to the. That's ideals. which one they. That's the ones yeah. extreme. Yeah, yeah, I, yeah, right. And yeah. then the Sunnis are more like taking it as like a uh, like metaphorical way of reading like the Quran or whatever. And I think the like the disagreement they had was something about like the like who should like inherit. I guess the like be the leader of the church after Muhammad died. Some okay. people think it's like his son. Some people think it's like. Oh, Someone. yeah, I do sort of remember that. Yeah, yeah right? Yeah. yeah. I just remember, like, the broad concepts. I don't really remember. I feel like in class, I think it'd be helpful to, like, do a refresher of, like, the Sunni Culture? versus the Shia. Yeah. Talk about which one these are, how that relates to the book. Yeah, I wonder. Yeah. It really the, uh, yeah, there's no real context. I don't even know if it matters to this book, but... No, I don't think they... I mean, they say in the introduction that, like, it's... Like they're in Muslim culture, but they don't like stereotype either. I feel like that would definitely help with stereotypes. Like, I guess, like, yeah. if we let this class, like, thinking that, like, a lot of, like, North Africa is Muslim, did, did we really learn anything? Like, which right. one's Sunni? Which one's Shia? Yeah. So we're just stereotyping them all as Muslim. Why do they believe the way that they do? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. How, how much does that matter to their culture? I, I feel right. like I could really benefit from learning that. Yeah, that could be helpful. For sure. Um. What's confusing about the book? Well, I guess that goes back to what we were talking about in the beginning about 
why he's using all this promiscuity. Yeah, I think it wasn't necessarily like confusing. It was just kind of like, well, I guess it, I guess it was confusing. No, I wouldn't say confusing. Maybe just, just like, like curious. It, it inspires like thought. Yeah, it's like why is he using all this? Why would he include this? Yeah. What's the deal? Yeah, yeah. What's the point of what's, that? Yeah. What's the deal with all this promiscuity? Yeah. Because oh, like most of the last part that we read is like has to do with that. And, yeah, like, the and, sexual exploits of Mr. Mustafa. Yeah, what's the deal? Yeah. Why does this matter? And his pursuits. Yeah, if we have to. If, man. Ooh. I want to read chapter three because I'm for so interested. I wasn't interested before I came here, but now I can actually <laughs> wonder what's the deal. I will, I the part that says like the infection had stricken these women a thousand years ago. I was confused about what they were talking about. You know, talking about this germ of disease. That confused me too. I feel like the I, I think the disease they're talking about is depression or mental instability or I'm insanity. Sure. I that's what I thought when I was reading it. I was like, hmm, I think this is, and I think that the. I think maybe, maybe that like him saying that like it came about a thousand years ago, maybe he's saying that like they were born with it and still it's genetic, maybe. Okay, I was gonna say why a thousand years ago? Because I, that's that, like kind of specific. I think that would make sense, though, right? Yeah. Right? Except like a thousand years ago wouldn't be like, like this, this was written like in modern, like modern times, right? Like it wasn't like a. Yeah, I, I, this is like a modern. I think they, I think they knew about genetics before when they wrote this. Yeah, this was written in sixty nine. Yeah, this is. So and like it's set sort of in the same time period, right? Like it's not like. Oh. I'm pretty. I'm pretty positive. Yeah. I, um, so it wouldn't really make yeah. sense that a thousand years ago is like when you were born. Yeah. No. You know they, I mean? they were still. I feel like they were still born. Like. He's like saying like a thousand years to emphasize that's like when it like okay. first like came to the family like yeah. and it was passed down over generations. I see what you mean. Right. Yeah. But. The germ was planted. Maybe means like someone in their family mar married someone with the germ with the depression gene. Oh, wait. Right. Wait. In the in the introduction, it says, at Sage trial, the defense lawyer argues that these girls were not killed by Mustafa Saeed but by the germ of a deadly disease that assailed them a thousand years ago, the mention of the Roman invasion of Britain might give the reader pause, but this image is expanded upon throughout the novel. So it's talking about the Roman invasion of Britain? Um, what does that have to do with it? I don't know. <laughs> what is our history teacher right now? Okay, so I know the Romans invaded Britain. I know that happened. I don't know that was after they, they, I think that was after they conquered the Franks, right? And the Goths. Probably. Right? Well, I know that's when it happened. Oh, man. I have no idea. I don't know. I, I feel like I could definitely benefit from like a full class discussion on that. <laughs> yeah. Um, that's a great question. I guess I missed that whenever I read the introduction. The mention of the Roman invasion. That's, that's a good question, though. How does the Roman invasion of Britain connect to the to to the to the germination of this disease? Yeah. Or are you looking up the information on it? No, I'm just gonna write it down so we can like look at it later. Yeah, that, that could definitely help. Um. So do you think like, um, do you think this book could connect to Kine in any way? I mean, definitely. Like, because I know he's got like the five reasons. Uh, I think I think they were like current racism, leftist mm -hmm. racism, entertainment. Are there any uh, other? Yeah, because I didn't have to do the other two. <laughs> I have them written down. All right. Yeah. Okay, okay. Um, leftover racism, newer current racism, current exploitation, entertainment and media, and self-definition. Self-definition. So like colonialism, you know. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Westerners defining themselves by. I feel like this uh, could potentially be taken. Maybe with uh, 
current racism. Maybe if some people thought that like all Africans were like primitive yeah. and like all like violent and they have no morals. Maybe someone would read that Mustafa was there being promiscuous, having no restraint on his sexual desires and, and think, oh, of Mustafa's like that and like uh, generalize that to it. So maybe that could that could affect people like that, maybe. I did think about that. And then I was like, if that is if that was the if that would be a thought, then like why would he include it? You know what I mean? Like why mm. would you Maybe to entertain. To entertain. It is, it is building yeah. up suspense and tension. Yeah. I am definitely entertained. Yeah. Yeah. Um I don't know how many people have read this though, and that will affect them though, so I don't know if this is a good case. Because when I went to buy this at the bookstore at I didn't buy it at university bookstore because I knew they'd have a bunch of them and they'd yeah. all be overpriced. So I, I went to Bonds and they only had one of them. So I don't know if the fact that they only had one, like. There's not a lot where a lot of people buy it? Yeah, I don't yeah. know if that ma- I don't know how widely read this is. Because it has an introduction, but that's a, all books have introductions, so it doesn't really help a lot. Um, I think it's like pretty well known just because like the introduction talks about like how it's like one of the most widely read. Arabian novels because or like or Arab African or however you say that because it was translated into English. I had never heard of it before. I had heard of Things Fall Apart and Heart of Darkness before walking into yeah. this class. So I'm not I sure. Have, I haven't read those either, so I don't know. Yeah, I have no idea. Yeah. But, um, um I think maybe it could definitely like conquer stereotypes with the fact that like he's this really smart African guy. Some people think of all Africans as really dumb, never heard, never have a hearing of math or like history. Or yeah. Can't speak English. Like, this is like a smart burrito that like definitely says, hey, if you think that about every African ever is really dumb, you would be very wrong. And you should stop that. Right. Which also, like, the story of the narrator and Mustafa is like they went off, like, basically to college to be educated and then they came back. And that also means they're not poor. They can afford college. Right. Either that or they were so smart that they got scholarships. Either which, that's yeah. amazing. Yeah, right? I yeah. think they were smart. It was more like scholarships. But it's sort of like the same story of like, like in the Midwest, you know, when like a kid would be really smart and he would be out of place at his village and then go to college and come back and like feel out of place. So like I think it's yeah. kind of relating it back to like, Western culture, because it's like a common theme in a lot of yeah um, stories. In any case, like even if we like ignore the morals, it's a really good like it sends a really good message that hey, even if you're poor, you, there's upward mobility for you. Definitely, you just have to like strive for it. Yeah. I like that message. Yeah, it kind of reminds me of how like in Han China. If you were like really smart or something, like the village could like sponsor you to get yeah. those, those yeah. that take that one entrance exam, pass it, and become like something. Yeah, I know. You're about. You know what I'm talking yeah. about? Yep. I know how they have that. I always thought that was kind of cool. Yeah, that's definitely. And I think it was sort of. That sort of happened in that. Did it? I think. Did, did, he, did his family help him pay for college or did he? I don't know. Um, I read a similar thing for an English class, and I'm kind of like in the same story, so maybe I'm not positive. Are you in English right now? Um, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um. I read it yesterday. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, I can't find it exactly right here, but. Well, it'll be food for thought. Right? Yeah, definitely. And it says the narrator has been gone for seven years. Why is his family so curious about what his life was like in, in Europe? Well, I think that's a really obvious question. Like, yeah. <laughs> if one of your like friends like went to Africa, you would definitely be curious. Be like, yo, what was it like? Uh-huh. How was it? What did you do? Tell me right. everything from the moment you woke up. Yeah. Like, and then it was like he um, said, like, I didn't want to tell them that they were just like everyone else. You know? Yeah, yeah. No, who? Yeah, he says that in the beginning. I forgot about that. Yeah. Yeah. I even, yeah. I thought that was like a pretty big like portion of. Do you think maybe that's why like stereotypes still persist? Probably not the only reason, but just one factor of it. Like people go to Africa, they come back. No one wants to say, yeah, the people there were just like everyone else, because that's that's a boring story. Yeah. You just spent like 
a bunch of money to go to Africa and stay there for like three weeks and you're gonna say that they're just like everybody else yeah. no you're definitely gonna hype it up right right and make it bigger than it actually was yeah and I think the way that he described it too is like kind of depressing just because it was like the just like us they are born and die you know and like and in the journey it's like the second the third page like of the first chapter okay um I feel like that, yeah that's like, just kind of that's kind of what's just boil people down to the basic necessities and tell you how people are right what people feel or think or how they act on a daily basis yeah that's just kind of depressing yeah but i think you're right like that could be part of why uh like stereotypes persist just because i mean like because i've even seen like missionaries come back and they talk about like what all they saw and like obviously most of them are in like the poorest parts of this country so they don't have like, a oh, full yeah. view of what it's like anyway so you're only mm -hmm. getting like one story or whatever that exactly. of the people and it's the most like it's like the worst things because they're the most interesting I guess so. I feel like it'd be really hard to be like well traveled in that case because like you'll, you could travel to a lot of places but still your world view on that place will be limited because it's so hard to see every kind of case. Yeah. Every, like, I guess every human is the exception to their culture. Yeah, and then, yeah. then you're, like, you're not a part, like, you can't fully integrate yourself into, like, like, he couldn't fully integrate himself into British society. Yeah, of course not. You know, so, yeah. like, he can't really see all of the, like, facets of that, so, like, we couldn't see the army facets of I feel like even so, for him, if pretty much he's wait no, I'm thinking of Mustafa, not the narrator. Mm -hmm. Never mind. Oh. <laughs> I was gonna say maybe Mustafa didn't even get a good like glimpse of Britain because all because he said that like Britain was so beautiful that he never got to see it because he was always being promiscuous. Right. <laughs> yeah, so maybe that, there's other reasons that, why. That could be. Like if you weren't like fully interacting with other with like people who are from a certain place, how can you really be sure, like, yeah. if, you, if you spend your time in your hotel room the right. whole time? Right, but at the same time, he was, like, out, like, seducing women all the time, so it wasn't like he was, you know, like, in the bedroom with them all the time, like, he was also pursuing them. Like, he said he took three years to pursue Jean Morris. So, uh, yeah, yeah, that's that's, is, that's okay. a lot of time. He probably did other stuff in that time. Yeah, oh, for sure. Because, I mean, what, how many people was it that, how many girls died? Because oh, of, I, I, I was just on that page, too. And then he said, it said, like, how many people were you, um, like, sleeping with? And, um... Yeah, there was Anne Hammond, Sheila Greenwood, Elizabeth Seymour, and Jean Morris. Yeah. So those people those girls died but he was with um like in one part of it uh what page is that i'm sorry uh 32 of the mine but okay. i'm not sure it'll probably be one or two after yeah one. and then dang i can't find oh that in this period alone you were living with five women simultaneously i thought it was 55 did I read that page wrong? Uh, I think it's on that. One back, okay. Like at the bottom? Five. No, I'm just kidding. It's like, for every occasion I possess the appropriate guard, it is not true by way of example that in the period between October 22nd. October 22nd, yeah, I remember reading that. I just gotta find it. Um, I know what you're talking about. I just, yeah. Was it five or 55? Because I swear it said 55, but I thought that, wow, that's a lot of women. Mine says five, but 55 would be even. Yeah. Either way, that's a lot of women. That is like, that is still a lot of women to talk about. Yeah. Simultaneously living with. Oh, wait, it was one after, yeah. Okay. Yep, it was five. I don't. Okay, that makes a lot more sense. Yeah. I was really confused. <laughs> 55 would be really hard. That would be a lot of women, yeah. Five is still a lot. Five is still a lot. At one time? Yeah. How do you pull that off unless you live with them all at the same time? Like, I don't know. Like, like, they was he going from house to house, or was he like, were they all like in one big house? I don't know. I, 
Yeah, I guess that's part didn't, of like. Didn't we stuff. didn't we talk about like polygamy at some point in the like class? And things fall apart because. Oh yeah, a that, that was a, that was a fuck. That was how many fall. wives? I thought maybe that was like. I thought maybe she said that as like a precursor to this. It's like oh. I don't, I don't think so. Okay. But also, like they don't mention that in the village life, do they? I don't think they do, but I feel like even if they don't, I feel like some people would read that and think, "Oh, those Africans are polygamists," and become right. and get all reli- get get, yeah. get their religion involved. And yeah. Get, even though it doesn't explicitly say that. Yeah. So that could definitely be another cause of stereotypes. Yeah. So Mustafa is kind of like living out another stereotype, you could say, probably. Yeah. Like, by doing that. I feel like with this particular book, the biggest cause of stereotypes is lack of co- context. The portrayal of characters. Yeah. Like, yeah, definitely. Definitely. Like, so I guess it says that even if a book is, like, written by a guy, because he was he was from Africa, right? Tayeb Sally? Yeah, he was born mm-hmm. in the northern province of Sudan. Yeah. yeah. So he's from this part of the... Yeah, so I guess even if you wrote, even if, like, obviously, like, you're a primary source, you know, you could still cause stereotypes. You know, unintentionally, right. of course, he didn't mean to do that. But. Yeah. Huh. That's crazy. Yeah. Um, one thing that I forgot to, that like kind of was, um, not confusing but unexpected for me was when, like, they talked about when the, the narrator came back, and his friend said, um, we were afraid, or, yeah, we were afraid you'd come back with an uncircumcised infidel for a wife. Oh, like, I, I saw that. Circumcision. I was like, oh, that's not good. Yeah, oh. and so, like, I don't know, maybe it's not, maybe that's, like, I don't know how it is, like, now, or, like, what the what the author would say about that, but in the book, it seems like it's, like, a very, like, okay thing. Like, they're pretty much good yeah. with it. I know in the, I, I, uh, I know if you're Jewish or Muslim, I know guys are expected to be circumcised. Jewish. No, Jewish and Muslim. Yeah, Jewish and Muslim, yeah. Right, yeah. Not if you're Christian anymore, but we still do it here in America because of John Kellogg. You ever heard about that? No, but I mean, I know. Basically, like... John <laughs> Kellogg was this religious nut. He uh, invented cornflakes, and he like believe, he like popularized the idea of circumcision in America basically to stop like something that he thought was a sin. Oh. Uh, he, he thought masturbating was a sin, so he... Interesting. He popularized the idea, and yeah, so he, the guy who invented the cornflakes cool. did that, and that's, that's the, so that's the reason why it's in America. But I, I don't, I don't know if that is, it applies to female circumcision at all. Yeah, I don't. I don't think. I don't think. Not, to, I don't not think in to, Jewish culture, definitely not. Definitely not. Yeah. I don't know. I, guess I don't that's know. The, I've never. Muslim I've never. Culture? I don't think it is in Muslim culture. I've never read the Quran, but I feel like. I neither. I feel like in history class we definitely would have heard about it. You though. think, or do you think they would have left it out? Do you think we're like being, you know, misled? Um, I would <laughs> like to think they would have told us. Yeah. You know. So. I don't know. Some people are pretty. Do you think maybe maybe because we don't have any context, a lack of context there causes stereotypes? Yep. Yeah, yep. yeah. There we go. Because there's nothing we can do to fill in those gaps, but just say, okay, <laughs> I guess they also they also do female circumcision. Yeah. Okay. But huh. yeah, that was that was my question. It's like, is this just this part of Africa, or I have no idea. The Sudan, or is it their culture? Or... I know John Kellogg wouldn't have uh, caused them to do that, so. <laughs> Oh my gosh. Crazy old John Kellogg. Well? Alright, the most easy question. Who is Mustafa? What does it tell the narrator? What does it tell the narrator? What does it say? Yeah, basically his life story, how yeah. he went to car- how he was born in Cartown or Khartoum. He was Cairo? Super- Wait, no, 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 you're right, you're right, you're right. Yeah. 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 And he was a smart burrito. Went to Cairo. Yes. Too smart. Went to England. Yeah. Then started seeing people. He was this guy. Five who, women simultaneously. Oof. And he was um. He was living in the narrator's home village, and no, he did. He the narrator saw him was like, "Hey, who's this guy?" Didn't really know much about him, and the, the narrator seemed to want to know more. He was so curious about this guy. Yeah, he even mentions like when he first saw him, he like. 
thought back to that and was like, wow, it's really interesting that he didn't say anything. Do you, do you think maybe they had an interconnection? And that's why that's why Mustafa came to um, to his house, house. Yeah, and gave him some fruit. Do you think maybe yeah. he was he was like compelled to do that by interconnection? I think that Mustafa is motivated because he like murdered or was involved in the death of those girls. I think that's why he's motivated to know the narrator because he's like explaining what happened so that no one else in the village knows because he wants a clean break from it. But I think that the narrator might have been like motivated by that connection. Do you think maybe the narrator did something like that or do you think it's just Mustafa? Do you think we just don't know it yet? I don't know. I think we just don't know. We just don't know. I don't know. Do you think that the narrator... I'd like to think he didn't, but remember when he like didn't really tell much of his family what the people were like? Yeah. Like, what if that's because he didn't know because he was always doing some mysterious things? Could be, but I think uh, maybe we'll find out later. I think maybe he's just drawn to him because he's curious, and then he does that whole poem in English. Yeah, and I think that, that yeah. like really set the stage for him to like, I'd like to think the narrator's not like that. I don't yeah, think I would things. like to think that as well, but... Just just one, please. <laughs> yeah, just one normal like, oh, yeah, character. Please, for love of God. Just <laughs> don't, don't do this to me. Does it try to shoot his wife over the wall? Or yeah, just one. Kill someone, yeah. yeah, for sure. That would be nice. That would be nice. Um... Why do you think he made the poem have to be? It's it's on page fourteen, so plus or minus one. Um, but so it's about like a, the First World War. Why do you think he made that the poem that Mustafa recited? Let's, um, let's read it. Those women of Flanders were. I'm not gonna read it out loud. Yeah, but, that's that's kind of long. Yeah, um, it's, it's a long poem. But why, why that poem? I think maybe because it focuses on the women. And like Mustafa is so absorbed with like, yeah, depressed yeah. women, I guess. It because we kind of like yeah. established that. Yeah, that I didn't think about that because I to embrace of the to the embrace of those women with sad faces. Await the lost. Mm -hmm. Maybe the loss is like their lost happiness in this case when we're talking about the dead women. Yeah. But, yeah. I didn't even think about that. That's crazy. But what do you think? Oh, uh, you know, I think maybe he talked about the First World War just to give the original context of the poem, just so it's just like not some lost words. Yeah. Yeah, because when reading about the First World War, I thought I thought about it like women who like had husbands die in the First World War, but I think that's kind of irrelevant. It's like there to like set the stage. Yeah. And he did it. And I remember he said it. It was in being really good English. Right. So that also sets the stage that this guy's like. Yeah, the story definitely yeah. sets the stage for him. And it was so like literally he says, I tell you that the ground had suddenly split open. So like groundbreaking, like he was like super compelled by him reciting this poetry. We know that Mustafa is really smart and you know how he's have a tree where some branches produce lemons and others oranges? Yeah. Do you think maybe like Mustafa like tinkered with it biologically and made it do that. The tree. The tree, because he was playing with the roots, or like messing with them, tinkering with them. Oh. Do you think maybe that's his doing and kind of foreshadowing? This guy's really smart. I mean, it could be. And but also, it's not that hard. I guess maybe I'm like assuming, but like it's not that hard to graft like lemons onto like oranges onto a lemon tree. Yeah, but to make it grow that, a tree that produces both lemons and oranges, if they still have the tree root. Yeah, I mean, I don't know. I feel like that's not that, that difficult, but maybe, maybe you could be right. I don't have no idea where to start. Yeah. <laughs> like, I, feel, I feel like most people that aren't agricultural majors wouldn't know what to do. Yeah, yeah. And I maybe see. like... Or but maybe, they are or, a farming commu community. True. You know, they had that whole like farmers committee so sure, but this was like this was like this book was written in like 1960 do you think the average farmer knew how to do that um, a, I mean, I guess a, I a typical I would, everyday farmer 
I wouldn't know about like in the Sudan, but like hmm. here I know that and like to be true. Yeah. So I guess assuming if they're like us. Yeah. Like they're 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 assuming, so. Yeah. You don't wanna presume because then you make a press out of you. I guess they would probably it would probably be more like poignant to talk about like why there was two types of fruit instead of like how he came up with that. To mm. to me anyway, I don't know. I don't really feel on that. I'm thinking maybe think it's because like he was he was digging up the ground around the lemon tree, so obviously he was exploring. He was curious. I'm pretty sure that's. I think that's just foreshadowing to say that he's smart. Right. You know, he's trying to find out more about it. He's okay. probably definitely had some experience in biology. Yeah. And botany because he, he took a lot of classes. So I. Right. That's just my personal thoughts. I'm definitely yeah. open to other interpretation. Yeah, that definitely could be. Yeah. Or, um, do the Lemons and Oranges, do you, like, like, Mustafa as a lemon and them as, like, the village people as oranges or something like that? Or do you want, like, the binary of British people to Sudanese people? Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? I like, I like got another thought, because yeah, right ahead. after when he says that, he says, Has your long stay in England made you forget Arabic, or do you reckon we've become anglicized? Obviously, he says this, says this in another language, but his diction and his tone is one where I feel like he's definitely pretty smart. The word anglicized, that, that's a big boy word right there. Like, <laughs> yeah, that could be true. And like his word choice, like he could have just said like, did you forget Arabic because you've been away? away or like, like the diction definitely like foreshadows that he was very intelligent. very intelligent for right. sure yeah i think that's kind of throughout it and like the way that he talks about his uh maybe that's why he doesn't really talk that much he doesn't want to give anyone any impression. remote clue of what of his past they just want he just wants people to know that he's from cartoon yeah. yeah yeah i think that's definitely true but then the the narrator picks up on like his facial expressions yeah, I mean, because the narrator that? is very smart. I yeah. don't know if everyone would be like that. Yeah, so I think that was kind of important to note. Do you think the author wrote this to like conquer stereotypes or just to tell a story? Because from what I'm getting right now, it's just to tell a story. Yeah. With like the mention of promiscuity and like the way we're analyzing it, I feel like this definitely is more. Just a story. Yeah, but I feel like there's definitely some morals that we could take to prove other things, for, yeah. sure, for sure. Um, I mean, I think that by telling a story, you're, like, helping degrade stereotypes because there's different things within a story. That's true, You yeah. know, so it could be, it could be either way, but I think whether or not he intended to, It definitely had consequences, stereotypes. apparently. Yeah. yeah. So. Okay. Unless you have something more. Oh, uh, I think we definitely have just a little bit more. Okay. We got a little more. Um, did anything, like, really, really surprise you? Like, anything else? I guess just the treatment of the women, really. Yeah. Yeah, this was 1960. I think women's rights were on the way, right? Yeah. And like, he was obviously an intellect, so I'd imagine that he, and he was an academic, so I would imagine that he would support that. Yeah. Hmm. Then he just talked about how like, like um, Sheila Greenwood was a simple girl. Oh yeah. You know, her people were village folk. Do you think maybe? Maybe by portraying the way he's promiscuous, he was trying to advocate for a better treatment of females in society. It could be, yeah. No, I, I haven't really thought about this in other terms other than like African stereotypes. No, I, I feel yeah, like that's there, true. I feel like they, they, there could definitely be some more in there. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think so. But also like the way that they talk about female circumcision is like not... Do you think maybe he wanted to shock the audience yeah, with like, that yeah, and that's say, what I was saying. start a discussion about how, because right. not a lot of people know, I think, I didn't know until like age 12 that like female circumcision was a thing. 
No, oh, no, yeah, definitely not. I don't think I'd get to high school, so. Like, I was like, huh, that's real? Like. Yeah. So I think maybe before then people didn't know, because I don't, because I think we know, I feel like a typical Westerner knows more about Africa that's truthful today than they did in 1960. Yeah. So yeah. I feel like maybe that was to start a conversation and bring okay. awareness to it. Yeah, that would make sense. I think definitely um, Tayyip Salad as a um, supporter of human female rights. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I feel, I, th I think um, for residents in Britain, I feel like maybe the way he's like describing the places in England, I feel like that has more like meaning, but I don't really know anything of like where he was talking about. Like he's like Albert Hall, um, Hyde Park. I know Hyde Park's still a neighborhood in London, but that's about it. There's also a Hyde Park in Chicago and in um, St. Louis. Um, and he, he's, a, he's a lot of cultural references on page 36, plus or minus one. Yeah. Edith Sitwell, Bernard Shaw, the Haymarket. And like none of these are like, I don't know. Well, yeah, I don't, I'm out of context here, so like. The only people I really know is Beethoven and Bach. And oh, yeah. Obviously. <laughs> yeah. So like, what do you think? Do you think these cultural references have any meaning? And do you think he's trying to connect, make a connection with people who live in the United Kingdom, maybe? I guess that could be true, yeah. Trying to reach them, I guess. Yeah, or maybe just, like, saying how connected Mustafa was in the culture, if that makes sense. And he says he was there for 30 years, so obviously he understood Beethoven, Bach, and Bernard mm -hmm. Shaw. Right. 30? Where did that say 30? Uh, right here, top. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Where did he meet that one woman, uh, Isabella? It was at a, some kind of play outside, or Speaker's Corner? Yeah, Speaker's Corner in Hyde Park. So, like, it was from the West, a speaker from the West Indies talking about a color problem, about the color problem. Hmm. So, more like racial equality, I'm assuming. He, he doesn't say anything about the problem, but I feel like definitely he put it in there so people like you and me having a conversation about it could talk about it. Yeah. So I feel like, I feel like... With the way he portrays women, the fact that he mentions female circumcision at a time when it was probably taboo, mm -hmm. um, he mentions the racial problem, and he mentions like things that people who live like in a in a part of the country or like cultural references. Would I with? Yeah, I feel like he's definitely trying to reach young people and make a connection, yeah. so they can talk about these cultural re not not culture, but to talk about these like societal issues. Yeah. What their thoughts on it and start a conversation. Yeah, it could definitely be true. Definitely. Like, he definitely right supports there. women's rights. For color, for um, for racial rights, I feel like he would definitely, um, de definitely uh, support it. But I feel like it was uh, about 1960. So, Martin Luther King Jr. March, I think that was like, what, 63, 64? Mm. Yeah, so I feel like this was right around the edge. Mm -hmm. But I feel like he was definitely trying to give a nod to him. Yeah, 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 yeah. Not, yeah. Not just like say supports him, but just give him a nod. Yeah. Yeah. Um, it's kind of funny the way that like he does mention that and then goes right into like Mustafa telling her that the streets of my country were teeming with elephants and lions. And that during siesta time, crocodiles crawled through it. Like, you know what I mean? It was just kind of funny that. Yeah, that's a situational irony right there. Yeah, yeah. yeah. definitely. Um, and he says that he, but right after he says that, he says he felt like a naked primitive creature, a spear in one hand and arrows in the other. And I feel like, based on his diction, you know, primitive creature, spear, arrows, like. Hunting. In the jungle. Transform. I feel like he doesn't like feeling like that. So he knows what he's doing is wrong, yet he still continues. Yeah, yeah. So. Yeah, that's true. That might be like, a, uh, that might be him, critic the author criticizing portrayal of Africa by National Geographic at that time. 
and by like f- and like how the world thought of Africa at that time. Right. But all, but like he doesn't want to explicitly say that. But he knows it's wrong, so he's portraying this character as like portraying Africa like that and then saying it's wrong. Right. Yeah. And it's so extreme that you know that like it's not. Mm. Um, what if Mustafa was like, a, or like supposed to symbolize the West, and like that's why he's so smart, like because the West at this time was tech far more had more technology because they just had the industrial revolution mm-hmm. than Africa, and maybe like the women that he's like sleeping with and killing is like places in Africa they're like carving up. Or what if what if what that's deep. you know like no, like <laughs> and that's. And he knows it's wrong because he's because after he's being portrayed like that, he know he uh, Mustafa knows it's wrong, but he just doesn't stop it. He keeps going. Yeah. Thirty years. How long was because he says he was living in England for thirty years? How long yeah. was uh, how long did it take to carve up Africa? I don't know. I don't know. I, don't have I thought it was like I thought it was a short amount of time, like five years. But so yeah. I don't think there's any significance connecting it to that. But uh, but he was definitely there for like longer like maybe the time like he spent in England was the time that the West spent in Africa like with colonies. Yeah, that could be. That I don't know. That's my really deep connection that I can make. Um. Well, what I was about to say is that like the way that he portrays like the woman in this part, like when he tells her fabricated stories about the deserts and everything like that. It just says, like, you know, she, uh, half credulous, half disbelieving, she listened to me. And it just, like, paints a very, uh, like, simplistic point of view of this woman. Like, she's so naive to believe these things, and she continues to, like, fall into this trap of, like, believing these stereotypes that maybe that's the way, like, we're fed stereotypes through like our media and news and stuff like that you know like we are the women in this yeah, story because like there's nothing else that like uh because what other like source of information is she gonna get he's right. a primary source yeah you know he's from africa yeah of course like she'll believe him yeah. i would too if yeah I were her. that's that's very true like and he does try to tell the truth at some point i feel like he's tr- like when he says i'm an othello but I feel like that doesn't really mean anything, so that might be because of, like... So he tries to correct himself, I guess, right here. It's like, I'm an Othello, and then he, like, tells him the truth and talks about his family, and then he continues lying. So I feel like... Yeah. So I feel like that's kind of, like, how we've been, like, had this distorted picture of Africa for so long that even when you try to correct it, it doesn't really help at all. That like, could... Yeah, that yeah, could be very true. For sure. Yeah. And he just keeps absorbing all of that. Yeah, and, and you know that woman is obviously going to talk to all of her friends and tell all of her friends all about um, Mustafa. That's and it would probably be even more skewed of a like version because she yeah brings up you know just for, like for sure cause yeah that's how information transfer works yeah. so and then they'll tell all their friends potentially who yeah, knows the whole telephone thing uh, so. yeah. It's just gonna paint one big distorted picture of Africa, and no one has the facts right. Right. So I feel like that's definitely. Yeah, he he. Yeah, I feel like he's definitely trying to portray, maybe not get rid of stereotypes, but portray. This is how the problem started, guys. Come on. Right. Yeah. You know? Right. Yeah. 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 All right. Well, we're reaching our final minutes. Do you have any uh, final words? Any any final things? Any conclusions? Um, concluding thoughts that you'd like to make about this? I don't think so, do you? Um, I can't think of anything. I, I feel like there's a. I feel like this book, because at some points it's vague, at some points it's like being promiscuous, mm-hmm. it definitely has a lot of interpretation, and it can be taken the wrong way if, you ha- if you're not taking a class like this, or if you just right. got this. But I feel like it's also there to entertain, so it's not just to persuade, it's also to entertain. And that's why he makes the character of Mustafa be promiscuous, but he also does that to send a message. So he does that pretty well, if that was his intent. Yeah, but yeah. It could, you're right, it could be like misread by people who aren't like educated like we are in this class. And obviously so. there's a lot of content to go through. I mean, that was just the first two chapters. We had an hour-long conversation about it, so... Very true. 
So I feel like with the coming chapters, hopefully more will be explained. Hopefully I'll have a better interpretation of why he wrote this and what the deal is. Yeah. So. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. Not right. too bad. I think we're good. We got 10 more seconds. I mean, do you want to read 10 more seconds? We got them. We can, like, rock, paper, scissors or something. Yeah, we got to, we got to work together. <laughs> we just right. stare at it. Pretty much, yeah. That's the rules. <laughs> All right, we're ready. Okay, cool. 